fam fam, Dorothy Gale in The Wizard of Oz famously said, there's no place like home. And music icon Stephanie Mills famously sang of home, I've had my mind spun around in space. Both sayings are true for our next guest, Kayla Barron, who is 250 miles from her home state of Washington, but is a world away from home. As a child growing up in Washington State, Kayla Barron watched shuttle launches into space, never dreaming that she'd end up so far from home. After graduating from the U.S. Naval Academy in 2010, Kayla trained to become a fighter pilot and served as a submarine warfare officer among the first women in that role. When she learned shuttle missions were like submarines in space, Kayla set her sights on a new goal and in 2017 was selected by NASA to join the astronaut candidate class. Last November, Kayla took the journey she'd been training for to the International Space Station. From on board the International Space Station, please, Sam Fam, welcome Kayla Barron to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to talk to you today. I mean, three seasons into this show, I never could have imagined I'd have a guest on the International Space Station, but here we are. I got to ask you, so you've been there since November. What do you miss most about home right now, Kayla? You know, I definitely miss my family, um, my husband. It's hard to be away from home. I've had a new niece born since I've been up here, and my other niece and nephew are growing really fast. Um, so it's hard to miss those moments. But for sure, it's lovely to share this experience with them, too. I'm able to stay in touch with them, video chatted with my whole family last weekend for my nephew's fifth fifth birthday uh, so I'm able to share this experience with them which is really special I love that so here and again I, I told people earlier when when I said you're only only 250 miles away from your home state I think most people would have lost that question on jeopardy including myself but you're able to stay connected to your family you and your husband have been married since 2013 do you have like a zoom date night I mean how does this flow how does this go yeah, we're able to stay in touch a couple of different ways. Um, as long as we have good satellite coverage, which we normally do, we're able to call on the telephone. And then once a week, we also have a video conference, which is really nice to see each other. Um, and we also go old old school and write letters, kind of pen pal style over email, of course. Um, but we find that a combination between those things kind of allows us to really stay connected in w what's going on with each other um, and just stay connected emotionally. So Tom is uh, a U.S. Army Special Forces officer. Is this the longest that you've been apart? Um, by the end of the mission, it'll be about tied for how long we've been apart before. He got out of the Army a few years ago, but he spent 10 years uh, both as an infantry officer and a special forces officer. So he did a couple pretty lengthy deployments to West Africa and Afghanistan. Um, and then during my career as a submarine warfare officer, I deployed to the Pacific three times, but that was only for three months. So this is the longest I've ever been away from home, uh, all told a little short of six months. Tell me about the moment you look back at home on Earth from there. Like, how, what is that sensation like for you? Oh, man, I get goosebumps when I get asked that question, just trying to think of the best way to describe it, because it's really hard to put into words. The views are just phenomenal. It's an amazing experience to look back down on the Earth. We orbit the Earth about 16 times a day, so we get 16 sunrises, 16 sunsets, and we get to cover most of the planet. We are just over Australia a few minutes before we started chatting. So it's, it's incredible, the views, and it really gives you a sense of how connected connected we all are, uh, how beautiful our planet is, how lucky we are to even exist, um, and how important it is to protect our planet for future generations. I mean, you know what, I actually get a little misty-eyed hearing you talk about it, because that's just, it is obviously unimaginable, especially in perspective, Kayla, with the photo of you from first grade. Um, you were sticking your head through an image of an astronaut pretending to be on a spacewalk and here you are. It's just, I, I, I just cannot, I, I think most of us watching just cannot imagine what a charmed life and, and what a journey you're on. Yeah, you know, I think for, for me, it's hard for me to even believe I'm up here sometimes. I just feel so 
grateful for this opportunity to live and work up here with such a fantastic team, not only on our crew on board, but back in Houston. I didn't grow up with the specific ambition to become an astronaut, but I had amazing parents, amazing sisters, amazing coaches and teachers and mentors who all along the way saw my potential and encouraged me to chase my passions and my dreams and to challenge myself. And because I had the amazing support, I was able to do that along the way. I had people to pick me up when I fell. Mm. And eventually that path led me to where I am today. Of course, you say people who picked you up when you fell. As I look at your hair and nothing is falling, and the necklace, the microphone, all of it, the irony not lost there. I have to ask you, of course, about the visual that we're looking at, because I'm sure everyone at home who has a kid who is in science is saying, wait a minute, Tamron asked her about the hair, the necklace, and even the mic literally can never drop. There you have it. <laughs> yeah, space mic drop is one where you can talk without letting go of the mic. But yeah, I it's been a really interesting experience getting used to this apparent microgravity environment. It's sometimes really frustrating. And it was a big adjustment to make coming up here because a lot of times we're working with all of this really small equipment or really sensitive stuff. And you're not used to the fact that if you let go of something like I am of the microphone right now and look away for too long, it might just fly, to, fly off and you might not find it again. So that can be really challenging, but it's also really novel and fun. Um, like you mentioned my hair, I was very surprised up here, the effect microgravity has had on my hair because I actually have pretty straight hair on earth, but up here it's curly. So I'm just living it up while Why I can. Why is that? Why is that? Why is it curly there? You know, I don't know. <laughs> we need to talk to the right experts on the ground to help explain this. But I think, you know, my hair usually has just the ever so slightest texture or wave. But the first time I washed my hair and let it air dry up here, I realized I had these big ringlets and I had no idea. My dad has curly hair. My niece has curly hair. So maybe I just didn't know it was hidden in there. I've been joking with my uh, crewmates, Raja and Tom, both came to my hairstylist before our flight and learned how to cut my hair in case I wanted a haircut while we were in space. And so they've been saying that I should go back to my hairstylist after the flight and show them a picture of my hair right now and say, can you make this happen on Earth? Kayla, when you look at the course of your life, is it dreamlike? Is it is it how do you again explain it? Because I don't want to lose sight of the fact that this is this is not easy what you've accomplished or what any of you on the space station accomplish. Yeah, you know, it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of years of training to end up here on the International Space Station, but when I think about those challenges, I, I return to that idea of the people who have supported me along the way. You know, just think about the four years of training I did before launching for this mission, all of the instructors, the flight control team who's experts in all the systems up here. And, you know, we're just really their eyes, ears and hands in space. So we're kind of jacks of all trades, masters of none and rely on that team on the ground to support us. And I think for me, there are there are definitely moments where you're like, it's getting real. Like when you climb into a rocket in a spacesuit and you know that thing's going to light underneath you and fly you to space, that that's a a moment that'll get your attention for sure. But I think because we were so well prepared, we had trained not only for if things went normally, but for every possible thing that could go wrong. Mm. And we knew how we would respond to those situations. We really can fall back on our training and our relationships with our team, both on the crew and in the ground support team, to know that we can get through those moments. And at the end of the day, I think for me and for my family, I really think those risks are worth it because I believe in the mission of human spaceflight. I believe in the incredible research we're doing. I believe in that human drive to explore and that desire to push the boundaries of what we've done before. And so for me, it's a real privilege to be in this position. Oh, I love it. I just love it. Now, tell me a little bit about what we're looking at around us. Yeah, right now I am in the Japanese experimental module, Kibo, and it's a laboratory module. We do some really, really cool research uh, here. There's some cool experiments here, like our free-flying robots, the Astrobees. Oh. These little guys, this is Bumblebee. Um, <laughs> but Bumblebee here is learning how to fly itself around the space station and eventually could replace humans in a lot of kind of 
tasks that can get a little tedious, like doing inventory or moving stowage around or doing acoustic surveys. So there's a lot of cool stuff going on here in the gym, and we work in here every single day. Well, I know that you're set to return in April, and I just thank you not only for your service and Tom, but obviously paving the way for future generations. My son will be able to say his mom talked to Kayla on her show, but more important, what you're doing for humanity is, is tremendous. Congratulations. Thank you. 250 miles from home, but a world away. And you're doing it with great hair. That, that I bow to. That I bow to. <laughs> Thank you, Kayla. Thanks, Tamron. It was a pleasure to meet you and talk to you.